The question on everyone's mind is, what next? What happens when venues are able to open up again? Will audiences still hunger for live experiences in the same way? And what can everyone in the events industry do until then to keep from going under? My guest in this episode, Eyal Simko, is the owner of The One Up Group, a full-service events production company with clients like Sony and Virgin Mobile, and he may have a pulse on this. Eyal and I talked about what opportunities every event creator, both large and small, has for changing their brand experience by incorporating virtual into their strategy and content, and how his company's new platform, Virtual Creative, was conceived from helping some of the world's largest entertainment brands reposition themselves in 2020. And let me just prepare you. If you're a sci-fi movie fan, some of this is going to sound very familiar. So let's get into it and say hello to Eyal. Eyal, thank you for joining me. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for having me on the podcast. Really exciting. Yes, of course. Now, of course, people just listening to the podcast won't be able to see this, but you have some very interesting artwork behind you. Can can I just ask you to talk about what those pieces are? Yeah, it's uh, it's been quite a conversation uh, starter. Uh, you know, spending so much time on uh, Zoom and uh, virtual space. Um, so this is uh, an artist called uh, Iconic, and they uh, do a bunch of different kind of artwork. This is their Monopoly Entrepreneur uh, series, and so there's a bunch of um, there's a bunch of um, Monopoly uh, nostalgia behind me over here with, you know, collect $200 go and, you know, all of this, uh, kind of entrepreneurial quotes with monopoly graphics. Oh, very nice. And, uh, certainly much better than the, the typical motivational posters that you find, you know, at Walmart. <laughs> I like them there. Everybody seems to, uh, kind of get a chuckle and it's, like I said, it's a conversation starter. So, um, they're, yeah, they're fantastic. Yeah, it certainly is right on. So, Ial, I wanted to talk to you about uh, a couple of things. Your clientele are some very heavy hitters. And I want to know how these companies were forced to reposition themselves and, and similarly how your company had to pivot to meet their needs as a result of the impacts of COVID. So maybe let's start with what was your company doing? What were you good at? What kind of customers and, and kind of campaigns sure. you were running for them yeah go for it yeah so uh i own a company called uh, the one up group and uh we're a full event production company and a lot of people kind of tend to use the word you know full event production um but there's you know a, a lot of a vagueness to it um really what we are is uh we're a turnkey solution to a lot of you know end clients like you know we work with amazon we work with warner brothers we work with air china uh, we've worked with Salesforce, Nike, like w- we provide them with event solutions. We have several divisions within the company. And so we have an entertainment division. So anything that you would need on the entertainment side, whether it's DJs or MCs, surf performers, dancers, roller skaters, um, you know, just really anything on the entertainment side of things that you can, uh, you know, uh, imagine. And then we have our technical division and our technical division is like LED walls and staging and lighting and, and, and you know, uh, a V technician, projection mapping, all of the technical side of things. And so the difference between us and kind of kind of our uh, you know, uh, value that we provide, whether it's organizers or direct clients or producers or event, you know, um, uh, event planners, is we're able to give you both the entertainment and the production as a turnkey, fully Q to Q show, right? And so now you don't have to work with four different types of vendors you, you don't have to work with a lighting company and then there's an audio company and then there's the entertainment company and then this person is going to bring in the staging and now you have to coordinate between four people. We're able to provide you the entire production. And so you're, minimalize, you're, you're minimizing the amount of vendors in the queue to queue that you have to do because we're able to create unique pieces um, for uh, the clients. Yeah. Um, since COVID happened, uh, obviously a lot of those things uh, have changed. And so... Um, you know, when, when it first happened, a lot of people weren't really understanding in terms of what the true impact of COVID was going to be. So they were thinking this is going to be, you know, a couple of weeks and then yeah. we're going to, you know, get back on, get back on the horse. Right. Um, we were in Vegas when it happened at the uh, special events um, conference. And a lot of my colleagues started getting these cancellations. And we realized that these cancellations are, you know, going to be, you know, industry you know, why? And so we had to figure out a quick solution to provide to our 
um, you know, event organizers and clients who may want to continue doing events, but are not able to do it in person. And so we developed a, a virtual event platform. Um, and we have been thankfully very uh, busy uh, providing those services uh, to our clients. Yeah. So the new platform that you're talking about, is it virtual creative? It is virtual creative. Uh, creative spelled with an eight, C-R-8, T-I-V-E. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's what we developed. It's actually uh, relaunching in the next couple of weeks. Um, so we've actually learned a lot, right? And so anybody that says, oh, we are, you know, this virtual event production company that's been doing it for years, you know, there's very few people who have actually been doing these, uh, you know, for, for a few years. Everybody kind of started, you know, adapting to the times. Um, and we learned a lot. And so when we launched it back in, in mid-March, right, when COVID hit, um, we got traction. We started doing a lot of events and we learned, hey, this works and this doesn't work. And this client wanted X, Y, and Z. And this client wants A, B, C. And kind of as we went along, we realized, let's add this feature. Let's add that feature. Let's add this feature. But throughout that year, it was very, very difficult for us to continually launch new features because we were just trying to keep up with the demand because everybody was like, I need a solution. I need to pivot. I need to do something. So it's a, it's a good problem to have, by the way. I'm definitely not complaining about it, right? Sure. Um, but we actually stopped taking any clients uh, this past December to truly focus on the redesign of it and to add some you know, automated features that are going to simplify the process for the end user, whether it's the participant or whether it's the end client or whether it's a company that wants to use our platform to continue doing these you know, webinars or sales conference. We really wanted to simplify the process, make it sexy, make it unique, make it modern. That's the whole, you know, um, uh, that's the whole concept behind virtual creative. Let's get creative. Let's do something different. Let's do it some. Let's do it simple, and let's make it visually engaging. So, can you give us a bit of a sneak peek about what your platform is going to be able to do and who it's going to cater to? Sure. So, I mean, uh, we've worked uh, with clients from fundraisers and charities uh, all the way to you know healthcare and entertainment and financials and all of that sort of stuff and. The interesting thing about virtual events is every single client has something different, something that they need, something that they require, something that they're interested in doing. And so it's constantly changing. There's no kind of, you know, rubric in terms of this is how every virtual event happens. And so we really need to be very flexible uh, with the solutions that we're providing our clients. One of the things that we're kind of focusing more on is the ability for branding the ability for marketing, the ability for you to have full control in terms of what that platform can do and can look like. Most of the platforms currently right now, when they say, oh, it's brandable, you can add a logo, you can change the color of the navigation bar to match your company colors, and that's your branding. That's not really branding. That's just adding a logo and changing the color of a navigation bar. That's not branding. Our platform will allow you to be able to fully design your event. Not only could you fully design it from scratch, but you can also upload graphics and logos and images and backgrounds and anywhere you want on the platform. Um, but again, in a very clean, sleek, modern design, that's the whole concept behind it. Is, is what we're finding is a lot of the platforms are either too complicated to kind of navigate around, maybe not visually engaging enough. The problem that we're seeing is, is that, you know, one minute in the virtual world is like 10 to 15 minutes in real life. Everything, we, we don't have the, 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 the attention span that, you know, we normally would have with everything kind of happening around in the real world. And so we really need to make it engaging. And that's where we are, you know, um, placing ourselves to be different from the rest is we really want to give you and your brand the identity that it requires. Absolutely. And I think you said something really important that a lot of uh, brands miss, that branding is not just about look and feel. It's about the experience. The whole user experience is the brand, is it not? 
hundred percent. You know, uh, they say, you know, a brand is defined by the experience of your audience, right? That's, that's how you define your brand. And so, you know, we, it's interesting because we come from the live events. We're, we're a live experiential agency. We create experiences for audiences live, right? And so we took all of our experiences, we took all of our ideas, we took all of the things that we knew worked very, very well and redefined how that can be translated into the digital world. And so when people are gonna to start to see virtual creative uh, and kind of play with it and explore with it, they'll see that there's a lot of kind of engagements that they can utilize to make sure that the participants can lean into the event a little more. Got it. So would you say this platform is designed for the larger brands that you work with like Sony and Virgin or could it be used by let's say a dance studio? Yeah, I love it. We're working with the school right now, actually. We're doing their science fair. So uh, we're working with like a teacher's association. Um, here's the thing. We are not building it for one particular type of client. We're literally building it for the mass. We're building it to the point where you don't need an AV company to run your event. It's got to be simple. See, one of the process that we kind of went into the design aspect of the uh, virtual creative is we understood that your audience will, it'll be the first time the audience interacts with a platform. They say that about 40, and this is a statistic from last year, it was 43% of people will log off or just, just exit the event within the first five minutes if they felt that it was overwhelming, too complex to navigate, or just unsure what to do. Yeah. And so we realized that this is going to be the first time they're, they're using this platform. So it needs to be simple. It needs to be very, very engaging right from the get-go. And it needs to kind of elicit the, uh, the need and the want to, to explore what's there. And everything is done in a very, very simple um, uh, layout, UI design. And so that's kind of the approach that we, uh, we took. It's not for large scale. It's not for small scale. It's literally for everybody. You can have a 15,000 person event and you can have a 10 person conference meeting internal, you know, kickoff at a company. So it's really geared and flexible to, to, to provide whatever solution you're looking for. Right. So when you say simple, sleek, clean, modern design, I'm interpreting from all of this. You don't need coding skills. You don't need to be a graphic artist. You don't need to be a website designer, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All of the features that we have in there are uh, UI widgets. They're built in a very clean, modern uh, uh, design. And so all of the buttons are going to be there. They're already clean for you. You can change the colors of the buttons. You can change the color of the background. Um, you know, at the end of the day, if somebody gave me a piece of paper and somebody gave you a piece of paper, Vinay, you know, and asked us to draw a house, a simple house, right? My house is going to look slightly different than your house, right? My windows may be a little bit bigger. You're, you may have a longer driveway or you might have a picket fence and I have a tree, right? Whatever, right? And so anybody, you, you have the, the, the freedom to design it however it is that you want, but all the features that are built into it are going to be delivered in a very uh, modern, clean design. Okay, awesome. Do you think you have a pulse on how the industry is going to change? Is there going to be a new genre of, of entertainment that, or, or a hybrid style of entertainment and delivery of these kinds of events that we haven't seen before? Yeah, I'm like nodding my head as you're, you're, okay. you're saying it. So if people are, uh, if they're not getting the, the video podcast of it and they're just hearing the recording, I'm definitely nodding my head with a big smile. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm not here to toot my own horn. Like I have my finger on the pulse and I know where it's going. Nobody has a crystal ball. Okay. Anybody that's going to tell you this is where it's going. They don't have a crystal ball, but based off of what we've been doing based off of, you know, the, the end goal, what's the end goal? The end goal, we want to get back to live events, right? People want to get out of the house. People want to go to a conference. People want to go to a concert. People want to hug somebody, high five somebody. Like we want to get back to live. And so the path that we're seeing where we are now, where we're doing virtual, now the, the, the hot word is becoming hybrid, right? So now slowly we can start inviting small, you know, micro niche targeted, um, you know, audience members to be live in the actual, you know, location with a virtual parallel, right? And so 
people that are saying, oh, virtual is a fad. It's just here just until we get back to live. I would, you know, um, politely disagree with them and tell them that virtual is here to stay. Virtual will become a parallel to live events. So even when you do have a live event, you will need to have a parallel or you will need to have some sort of element of virtual for the simple reason as this. For the past year, people have realized that these virtual events are A, successful, B, convenient. Someone from New York doesn't have to travel to San Francisco to be there, to capture the audience and to capture the content and all of that sort of stuff. Companies don't have to spend money on travel and, 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 and time you know, at airports and, and money on hotels and all of that sort of stuff. So it's become the ROI, it's very interesting because you can really have a, a, a beautiful you know, return on investment on your virtual events you know, for, for, for the simple fact of looking at what it costs you to even just rent out a convention center, right? Without any ancillary services. So hybrid is definitely um, the, the, the key word right now. And where I personally see the industry shifting is beyond hybrid is you're going to have to create, you know, a bridge, right? Between the virtual audience members and the online uh, and the, in the live audience, right? And how do you do that? What I think is going to happen is, is I think, inter remember internet cafes, right? You would go, and you, right? I think you're going to have internet stations, right? You're going to be having stations on site where the live attendees can go and have networking opportunities with the people that are, you know, online. You're going to see stage designs that are going to be completely revolutionized. LED walls are going to become a massive, massive hit. It's going to become a must because your LED walls can now bring in your digital audience to be part of the live audience. And from a speaker standpoint, standing on stage, you know, looking out into the audience. I mean, look at it. It's already happening in sports, mm -hmm. right? In sports, they were already putting, you know, these fake heads or they were using, utilizing AR to bring in some audience members to make it more authentic and really what we're used to back in the day of having an audience in front of us. And so that's, you're going to see technology rapidly kind of um, accommodate uh, the need to really mimic as much as we possibly can the live event. So we're actually in, in, in talks right now in, in uh, trying to figure out ways to create these internet stations to be really cool, modern, sleek, sexy, like be able to want to be there again, right? I can hand you a laptop on a table and tell you, go sit down and start, you know, uh, networking with someone and it's that's almost like a drag we want to be able to create that kind of internet networking station to be really fun really different something that you haven't seen before and um, like I said it's a very exciting time for us we're, we're kind of in talks in, uh, to in the design phase of you know introducing something else to the market I can already tell by the level of passion in the way that you're describing this, that is going to be something exciting. I have a question though. How is it going to be different for the entertainer, for the performer? Uh, excellent question, right? And so we have an entertainment division and our entertainers used to do live. We've converted a lot of our entertainment to virtual. And so um, I think our entertainers have become accustomed to the virtual space, to the way you interact digitally versus live, right? Um, take a mentalist, for example. A mentalist who, you know, at first you would think, well, they have to be in the same room and they have to like touch your hand and do some magic and like have some physicality or, you know, like try to look into your eyes and read your mind. We've successfully converted mentalism shows virtually. And it's, been incredible. It's been a huge hit, right? Magic shows, cooking shows, you know, yoga stretch sessions, um, you know, celebrity shutouts, like we're doing like giveaways, like all of these things that we've been doing for the past year seem to really, really work. Now, am I sitting here telling you that virtual is just as engaging as, on, uh, as live? Absolutely not. It'll never be as engaging. But I think as a performer, you also need to kind of adapt with the times to understand that you may not go right away to a 5,000 person audience. 
You may go to a 500 person audience with 25,000 people looking at you with LED walls from their home, right? So oh my you're going to start to see the hybrid entertainment of you know picking on somebody from the audience and even pegging them with somebody on an on a LED wall. And now they're able to communicate seamlessly. And now I can just do a show with two different mediums, live and digital. And so you see what I'm saying? Like, this is how we're going to be adapting through technology. Uh, I'm not only seeing what you're saying, I'm recounting movies that maybe I saw 10 years ago that were uh, envisioning exactly what you're describing. So now I'm really, really excited to see what yeah. this is. <laughs> we all are. We all are. Okay, y'all, I know you have other meetings you have to get to today. So can you quickly give us the links where people can learn more about virtual creative and how they can contact you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, best way is uh, to connect with me uh, personally. Um, I am Eyal Simko, so it's E-Y-A-L-S-I-M-K-O. Uh, you can find me on uh, Facebook as Eyal Simko. You can connect with me on Instagram. It's the One Up Group, and it's all spelled out. There's no numbers in there. T-H-E-O-N-E-U-P-G-R-O-U-P. Uh, the One Up Group, that's on Instagram. And so if you want to connect me on Instagram, if you want to connect me on Facebook, if you want to send me an email, it's my first name, E-Y-A-L at the oneupgroup.com. Um, I'm happy to connect with you guys. Uh, as you can hear, I, I get very passionate and, uh, and excited about speaking about you know, what we're doing and what the future looks like and happy to be a resource to you guys, whether it's for free information or whether you want to you know, play around with our platforms and technology. Um, like I said, happy to be of service and uh, resource. Oh, absolutely. And I'm telling you just this conversation alone, I think is going to light a fire under a lot of people because the more and more people I talk to, they just want to know that hey, not only is this going to be okay, we're going to survive, but there's an opportunity. There's something good. There's something else that we can look forward to. And I think you've hit the mark. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. And just one last thing, um, you know, Virtual can seem very overwhelming to people. Um, uh, it really shouldn't be. There's a lot of people, I'm not the only one, there's a lot of people out there that are offering these services. One thing that I really want everybody to just really focus on is it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's about strategy and the content, right? They say content is king and strategy. How do you deliver that content to people for it to be very engaging so they can, again, lean in and be interested in whatever you're uh, delivering? So think about that because, you know, everybody can have a home, right? Everybody can have a big mansion. It's just, it's what do you put into that home that will make it homey or not, right? And so it's the same thing. It's the analogy of the platform. You can use any platform that you want. It's what you do within that platform that is going to decide the experience for the user, which is something that you picked on earlier on is that what is the experience, right? That's the brand. The branding is the experience. So think about the strategy and the content that you uh, want to piece together and how you deliver that. All right. You heard it here, folks. You heard it from the man himself. Eyal, thank you so much. Absolutely. Really appreciate it. And uh, can I sign up, by the way? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All 100%. Right. I, I would love all that. Right. I'm going to go do that. All right. You have a great afternoon. Eyal, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Vinay. Take care. Thank Bye, you. everybody.
humans. That was not a power outage. It was my way of getting your attention. And now that I do, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Drummer, and I am about to take you on a musical journey 